you see her? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is my first video. And it's called Cooking with Nono. Uh, so, Nono in Italian is grandfather. Everybody knows about nonas. You know, there's an old Italian saying, you know, God loves you when you have a nona to cook for you. So I'll try my best to fill in. First thing you do, extra virgin olive oil, a couple cloves of garlic to get the garlic flavor into the oil. Uh, and what I'm making today is a polenta dish, but I'm using uh, commercial polenta. Haven't made it from scratch, but I guess in some video uh, I will make it from scratch. So that's one thing to look forward to. And the thing we do here is we brown the point uh, slices on both sides, sort of brown them up a little bit. So while they're browning here, uh, some of the uh, dishes I plan to make in future videos, if I do make future videos, uh, I will make a bruschetta, uh, an Italian peasant food, and the correct pronunciation is bruschetta. Bruschetta is something you get at Olive Garden which no self-respecting Italian will eat at the Olive Garden. So I will make uh, authentic bruschetta. Uh, and since my family comes from central Italy, on the border of Umbria and Tuscany, uh, I will make a classic Umbria dish is called porchetta. You may see it in the delis, uh, but don't be fooled because it's not a real porchetta. I mean, the only people who know how to cook porchetta are those from Central Italy. And another dish I will make that was one of my mother's favorites uh, was rosemary chicken with one bag. And uh, try as hard as I have, I have never been able to duplicate my mother's recipe. Yeah, it's always a wine bag. Uh, and so, you know. Oh yeah, another another classic uh, central Italian recipe is grilled rainbow trout. And for a short story, uh, I inherited some land in Italy with a trout stream, which my mother forced me to turn over to the relatives. And the last time I visited Italy, there was a restaurant over the trout stream. And their specialty was grilled rainbow of trout. So that's another lesson in life. And now it's time we will put a slice of tomato on top of the polenta slices. And hopefully we will have enough to cover everything. Yeah. Yeah, there's more than enough. You know, if you look at this thing, yeah, probably a little bit similar to Muscata, but it's certainly not the real thing. And uh, like I said, I will probably make that on my next video, if there is a next video. I'm going to add a little bit of 
Himalayan, the red Himalayan salt, which if you're going to use salt, don't, su don't substitute for this. This is the best salt you can use in cooking. It has much more minerals than regular salt. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is to put some cheese. Now this cheese is a mixture of Pecorino Romano and Parmigiano Reggiano. And again, if you plan on doing any Italian cooking, do not substitute for the Parmesan, get Parmesan Reggiano, the king of cheeses, which is top of the line. And, uh, well, when I was growing up, I'm first generation Italian, by the way, first generation American, I should say. Uh, and I grew up with the immigrants. And when they uh, used Pecorino Romano, it had to be Locatelli. If it wasn't Locatelli, it wasn't Pecorino, it was Pecoraccio. So, keep that in mind when you're picking your cheese. So now we just have to let this cook for a while, we'll cover it. And cook it for a while until the cheese melts. And then we will have what well, really passes for a polenta dish, but you know, you got to start with something, so this is it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know what you think, if you'd like to see future videos. If you want to see, well, I, I think I will concentrate on Central Italian cooking. Uh, because that's what I'm familiar with, and that's what I grew up with. And, you know got to get away from the southern Italian stereotype of tomatoes and, you know, that abortion that they call gravy. Believe me, the old Italians would be turning in their grave if they heard the word gravy used in reference to their beloved sugo. You know, I remember uh, every Sunday morning, Italians would put on the pot of pasta sauce or sugo, read El Progresso, listen to Carlo Butti on the radio, and with all your Gemma commercials interspersed here and there. It was an interesting experience growing up. And, you know, try to preserve the heritage as much as I can. Uh, you know, whenever I go to Italy, uh, they always ask me the time old question, well, why do you Americans hang on to this old early 20th century tradition? You're really caught in a time warp. You know, Italy is moving forward into the future, and here you guys are trapped in the past. But I really don't think that. I think we're just, the best we can, we're holding on to our heritage. Uh, I passed it on to my children, my grandchildren, which is interesting. Uh, I have two grandsons, uh, and one, I mean, he's only a quarter Italian, yet he hangs on to the Italian tradition, cooks Italian food. Uh, my other grandson uh, is not so much wrapped up in Italian cuisine, he likes to experiment with other cuisines, but he makes fantastic homemade pasta, and uh, it tastes it tastes just like my mother used to make. You can't tell the difference except for the sauce. And well, he also <laughs> he makes homemade gnocchi, which is a real art form. I mean, the stuff you buy in the store. That's not even close to gnocchi, believe me. Unless you have some real homemade gnocchi that are light and fluffy, you know, uh, you, you can't experience the real thing. And again, you know, gnocchi can be served either 
in a tomato sauce or a white sauce, a cream sauce. You know, some people nowadays seem to be gravitating towards the cream sauces and the vodka sauces and the other such excretions that uh, are trying to pass as Italian food. You know, fettuccine Alfredo for being one of them. So, I try to stick to the old recipes, maintain the heritage of my ancestors as best as I can. I also can be reached on uh, Instagram uh, under the name of Cousin Guido. And yes, I do have a Cousin Guido, and that's what I use as a username. So check me out if you want. Be happy to have you there. Okay, this looks like it's done. So let me put out a plate so you can get a good look. you can see this. Yeah, it looks like the, looks like the tomatoes could have cooked a little more. Jesus Christ, yeah. Look like Julia Child here, right? <laughs> Everything is screwing up. In case any of you don't know who Julia Childs is, uh, she was a French cook. Had a very popular program on uh, television. But she hated Italian food, and that's her fault. So anyway, that's it. Let me know what you think. Look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.